Hi guys, can you see me, hear me? Hello, yes. Hello. So let's begin today's session. Hi guys. <laughs> All of you unmuted yourself, so <laughs> yeah, I saw that thing. So I hope you guys are doing good. Um, we'll begin today's session. Uh, keep your back and neck straight, sit comfortably and very gently close your eyes. Just start connecting with your breath, observing the pure breath without any changes. <clears throat> And once you begin to become aware of your breathing, shift the attention to the body, become aware of your posture. Check your alignment and see if you can adjust your body so that you are more comfortable and your stability improves. <clears throat> now gently come back to your breathing and begin to deepen your breath consciously. As you inhale, Go for slow, long, and deep breaths. And as you exhale, do the same. Try to gain more control over your breathing. And as a consequence, relax your mind. And now, after your next inhalation, hold your breath for about two seconds. Hold the breath inside and then go into the process of exhalation. So we are adding a pause after we inhale. Just for about two seconds. Don't force yourself too much. And then exhale in a very controlled manner. We will open today's session by chanting Om three times, followed by three Shantis. Take a deep inhalation for Om. <clears throat> oh. Oh. 
Shanti. 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 Let's <clears throat> take a few moments to feel the vibrations. Join your palms together and begin to rub your palms together. Keep your palms on your eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, very slowly while blinking and looking mm -hmm. at your palms, begin to open up your eyes, coming back with a big smile on your face. Namaste and Om Shanti to everyone. <clears throat> Let us begin today's session. So yesterday we were talking about Gyan Yoga and uh, today we are just going to finish this topic, right? And we are going to <clears throat> come to our final uh, school of yoga, right? So yesterday I told you there are some core practices. Okay, there's something in the... Just a second. <clears throat> oh, no worries, no worries. <laughs> as long as you can hear me, that is, that's good. Okay, uh, so yesterday we uh, wrote down the three core practices of Gyan Yoga, Shravan, Manan, and Nidhityasan, right? So Shravan, Manan, Nidhityasan. So let's talk about these, why these are coming in the core practices. So... <clears throat> Now, listening, it's not uh, that easy, is it? And, uh, you know, especially when you have to listen to something which is, um, which requires a lot of comprehension, right? Uh, one thing is you are in a simple kind of interaction or conversation, or you have worked somewhere or studied something for a long period of time. So, you know, automatically you process what is being said, what is being told. But uh, when it comes to Gyan Yoga, the listening is not that easy a task, right? First thing, the kind of knowledge that is being given to you, the quality of that knowledge, it is uh, in such a manner that it is hard to listen to it, right? Really, really be there and listen to that thing. And uh, second of all, um, you know, uh, Listening is not, um, doesn't come very easily if you are not, uh, um, if you haven't already undergone some kind of training, right? So the four pillars that we discussed uh, that were, you know, essential for us in order to enter the core practices. So they are somewhat preparing us and giving us some training, right? They are developing certain virtues. They are developing certain things within us, which help us to come to a point where we can listen, really listen to what is being transmitted to us, okay? And uh, uh, the thing is that most people who are practicing Gyan Yuk, for them, you know, things become mechanical, right? Because now everything is intellectualized and it is very easy for intellectual things to become mechanical, right? So the Gyan Yogi has to put in more effort so that they can listen, right? Because there are a lot of repetitions as well, right? Now, Kar Yogi or Bhakti told you, especially in Bhakti Yoga, there is so much variety. There are so many mantras. There are uh, dances, there, you know, kirtans. So a person doesn't, like, it doesn't get mechanical that easily. But for the uh, Gyan Yogi, things can get mechanical because the base teachings remain the same. So in Upanishads, there are some, um, you know, lines which are considered to be the base of Gyan Yoga, right? They are called Mahavakyas. Okay, so I'll just write this down in the chat box. <clears throat> M-A-H-A-Maha-Vakya. 
V A K A Y A S. Okay. Maha means the first term. It means great, and Vakya means sentences. All right. So there are four great sentences of the Upanishads, mm -hmm. which become the basis for Gyan Yoga, especially when it comes to the core practices. These are four statements one comes back to. Right. So in order to you know even enhance. or develop the listening ability it is going to require some effort right once you listen to something like suppose i share something with you in philosophy class and um, then during your day you know something happens and i sometimes give you tasks also you know do this do that right so when you start doing those thing when you listen to something in general you know knowingly or unknowingly that thing you reflect you reflect upon that thing you know whatever is being said or told in the class your mind you know has this by default ability to contemplate or to reflect right but uh, for us you know the reflection it can go in any direction uh, for the gyan yogi this reflection is in the direction which leads to their enhancement okay so suppose there is a piece of information which is being shared with you right so now you can dissect it you can analyze it and through this analysis it can do you no good or you might end up going in a negative thinking pattern because the truths are so you know harsh it's hard to um hold that kind of truth right so uh, it's very easy for the gyan yogi to go in a negative spiral right when they are sitting and reflecting right so again manan seems very easy right contemplation seems very easy that you read a new idea you read about some idea and then you you know reflect upon it but it's very difficult to keep the reflection conducive rather than it intrude towards your own self right so the gyan yogi again has to put in the work for the reflection right and here they work consciously only right not uh, like for you guys like i said you know maybe sometime in the day you reflect upon something which is discussed in any class right so it is like a subconscious kind of reflection and it happens in bits and pieces but the gyan yogi makes the time to reflect okay whatever is being taught the gyan yogi it's a part of their routine that they they reflect upon whatever is being shared with them <clears throat> and they see it in their own respect as well right so it's not easy to always be in an introspective state right sometimes you just want to have a light you know uh, day and you want to just enjoy certain things in life right so not again like i said gyan yoga is not for everybody right because such high level of introspection we are not uh, we are still working towards that thing that we can be more reflective right because it's very serious no and um, uh, you know you get bored every once in a while so gyan yogi you know has to when they reflect have to come to the right kind of conclusions right the right kind of reflection has to take place and there is a lot of introspection that takes place continuously which is exhausting in its nature right so <clears throat> first practice shravan you listen to something then you reflect you contemplate you see it in your own regard and then you come to the third point which is the validation all right so gyan yogi i have been saying in all of our classes gyan yogi has a very strong reflective uh, sorry uh, gyan yogi uh, always validates the information right so how do they validate it through the third practice which is nidhyasan which is nothing but meditation okay so now look at this thing how all other schools they merge into the school of gyan yoga also so ultimately they become one only these schools are separate for you know us to understand better or us to find the starting point right but eventually all of them merge into the meditative practices only even hatha yoga the practices that you are doing you know hat yoga has its ending point in raj yoga only if you read any authentic hat yoga text there is 
the discussion of some or the other form of meditation okay so uh, the validation is done through the meditation now when the gyan yogi sits in meditation they are again focusing on the mahavakyas right the four main uh, <clears throat> statements which are from the upanishads okay which talk about non duality right so if you read the mahavakyas you will see one of them is like aham brahma asmi means i am the supreme reality okay so the gyan yogi <clears throat> uh uses these um statements which reflect uh, reality as their object in meditation okay which helps them to uh one thing come to the state of meditation and then uh, you know the object whatever object you choose in meditation it reveals itself to you when you do consistent meditation right so it leads them to their final point so the statements they reveal themselves to the gyan yogi because the gyan yogi is choosing these statements as the object and these statements are nothing but uh, they are just the realities that are uh, that were written right so uh, <clears throat> through this entire loop and process basically again and again they go through this entire loop right so suppose today i share some information with you that is why the importance of the teacher is very important when it comes to gyan yoga right because if suppose right now you are doing this course uh from an academic point of view more like that because you have a course syllabus right so we cover all the topics that are there in your syllabus but when you go to any traditional kind of school no they will not have a syllabus right they will just uh, uh, you know uh, see the capability of the student right and work with that you know so the guru will only share the information which they think that the person is also capable of handling right so suppose i uh, not i the guru you know shares some information right you are the student so you get that information depending on your level then you reflect upon it then you do meditation then again when you do the meditation when you validate it through your own real experience then you move to the next stage right then again the guru will share something more then again you reflect then again you do meditation right so it's not about having a course syllabus or covering certain things right because we are only trying to work towards uh, the you know ultimate reality having that realization of ultimate reality on a personal level rather than just what is being said right so the um, you know person goes through these processes again and again and again and even though it is har- harsh it ha- has a very deep cleansing effect on the person right so uh, if you ever choose to practice gyan yog uh, i would highly recommend first look for the right teacher right L- look for the correct person who can guide you and work one on one with you uh, when it comes to your journey because it's not about in philosophy like we talk about and we share a lot of ideas right but these ideas when will they do you good when you implement the ideas right so maybe for one year you implemented something then you came back joined the classes again then you discussed right you know this was my experience for one year then you can be guided as per your experience how you can deepen that experience right so this is the whole point right philosophy is also only um, going to help you when you are able to implement it if you just listen to w- what is being told in your classes you are unable to implement that will do you no good right so try to implement as many things as possible or whichever school you like in that as many things as possible right it will uh, change your entire life right it's a, it's going to be something very small or simple but it's going to bring about a very drastic and huge change in your life right and that is the whole point of these classes to bring about the changes right 
so this is the entire concept of gyan yoga uh, you can again read more deeply about it i told you in bhagavad gita where it is discussed and uh, i also told you that uh, swami vivekanand he has written on all schools of yoga so you can go ahead and find his uh, book as well on gyan yoga right any questions queries doubts anything you guys want to discuss no ma'am all right okay so feel free to write down in the chat box also there is no difficulty if some doubt comes up later i will be more than happy to address it so <clears throat> all right so let's um, come to the final school where all the other schools you know merge like i said the school of raj yuga and this is very important even in history and development i told you in earlier times raj yoga was practiced a lot right r a j a raj yoga this was practiced a lot in earlier times and the earlier times supported this right people used to you know put their kids in gurukuls their kids used to live with the teacher for years and years right so today's world it's not uh, designed in that way that uh, you know a, a child can go and be completely secluded right and nobody is worrying right so if somebody is unable to reach or call right they get worried no so these days the times has changed a lot we are practicing yoga in whatever capacity we can but in earlier times raj yoga was the most prevalent one and because the capability what's the name of the book okay um yes the name of the uh, book is gyan yoga only and i will write down the name of the author okay the name of the book is gyan yoga and it is written by swami vivekanand so there he has discussed deeply the idea of gyan yoga right so coming back to raj yoga so this was the most uh, popularly practiced uh, form of yoga and uh, that is why a lot of people they were able to you know devote their lives to it because it's very uh, much in touch with wh whatever other schools are leading you to okay so be it yin yoga any kind of yoga that you practice it doesn't matter right uh, it's all going to merge into uh, meditative practices only right and raj yoga is considered to be the highest path so raj actually this term means royalty okay and this path is called the royal path you know this path is you know have you ever seen uh, everybody become royalty no no very selective people uh, become royalty or you know they are given that high status right so raj yoga is a practice only few people are you know uh, ready also to practice right because it is very advanced very high level so you have to do a lot of preparation all of the preparation is being done so that you become ready at some point or the other for the practices of raj yoga raj yoga focuses on the mind it considers the mind to be the main thing okay and it says that if you can it's because of the various impurities of the mind that you are struggling and suffering and if you work on uh, certain tendencies of the mind you know like the ego all of these things when you work on the purification right then uh, you will be able to become one pointed and easily reach the final goal right so mind is given utmost relevance in the practices of raj yoga right and today's world it uh, you know likes yoga to be more capturing in nature right because when you do see somebody do some asan right any posture or 
uh, you know breathing practices even when you see that thing you get fascinated no very easily you want to do those things but raj yoga is quite uh, you can say um, boring or uh, very standardized in its approach right so again it's not for everyone it can become mechanical easily and it can be very boring also right so first work on preparing ourselves and then when you reach this stage then you will already be aware okay this is these are the practices of raj yoga so um, <clears throat> raj yoga believes that what you are trying to see it cannot be seen through the eyes you know in general philosophy is also trying to throw light upon something which cannot be seen yes yes it's not exactly the same but ashtanga yoga is a part of raj uh, raj yoga okay so i will explain there are different different practices in raj yoga one of them is eight limbs of yoga okay so <clears throat> raj yoga believes that the mind you know this mind which is constantly going in all the directions and causing so much disruption this has the hidden ability to get concentrated and focus on the thing you are trying to observe all right so raj yoga basically it is giving the mind a direction so that it that direction can throw light on certain realities all right so this is the basic concept of raj yoga uh if you read bhagavad gita you will find similar practices by the name of dhyan yoga which is the 6th chapter okay so bhagavad gita 6th chapter it talks greatly about the meditation practices and this chapter is named dhyan yoga right or the yoga of meditation and uh, in this you know krishna ji he gives the um, how he gives instructions on how one can meditate so he you know elaborates on uh, you know first thing how you need moderation in certain things in order to begin with the uh, meditative practices like you know sleeping eating there is some moderation that is required if i you know <coughs> sleep too much then i'm not prepared for meditation okay because uh, uh, when you do meditation there are other things that will require your attention so if already you are unable to gain control over your sleep over your uh, eating habits so raj yoga is not for you okay so he in the beginning only he said that there should be moderation in all the basic human activities okay then he moves on to uh, elaborate on the uh you know when you would have seen people when they sit and do meditation they generally sit on some mat or some dari right so he has elaborated on what is the quality of that what you ha- what you should sit on basically right so uh one thing is your body posture is called asan and second thing is the thing that you practice on that is also called asan okay so there is another meaning of the same term and that is what you sit on okay so then he talks of the quality of the asana and then he shares how the yogi should meditate right the back and neck should be straight right how the body should be what the posture should be and what the points of focus should be right so he has discussed very very deeply in the sixth chapter you know the uh, way in which one should practice meditation right if you come to the um uh other text which is very relevant for us so i told you uh when i was teaching the patanjali yoga sutra that this is a text of raj yoga altogether right so patanjali yoga sutra is purely a text of raj yoga right so all the four chapters and all the practices that are given in this text they are practices of raj yoga so uh, we are going to now discuss this text more deeply in the context of what are the practices of raj yoga that are given so i told you 
patanjali was very very smart so he divided the students in three uh, on three levels and he said that first i will address the advanced level student then the intermediate and then the beginner level right so he first of all he opens the text with the sutra atha yoga anushasana right so now i'm going to give the discipline of yoga that is how you he opens the text okay so this is a very very important statement okay when he wrote this statement you know he put a barrier between what has been so far and what is going to be after this right so no matter what you do in your life whatever you have done it doesn't matter patanjali said that now okay so now you are making the decision right that you are going to work on the process of yoga right all the processes i'm going to give you and this is the final point of yoga so in the next sutra only he explains what yoga is which we discussed in the beginning of the uh, classes only right because we started with the meaning of yoga right so the first statement holds a lot of relevance right no matter and i'm saying this to you guys also right so sometimes you know students they are like this is this is i i don't you know think this is for me or you know i've done so many other things and so many bad things i don't think i can they don't find themselves deserving right so patanjali when he started his text he said that till now whatever you have done it it doesn't matter okay but now today when you start reading my text you are taking this decision that from today i will change my life right so if after this you you know um still do the same mistakes right then it can be a point of concern right but before that whatever you have done just think you are starting from zero okay and then you build upon it right when you start reading the text you start understanding it then you build upon that thing right so then he moves on to tell about what this yoga is you know what is the state that is being talked of right and we have had one very long class on just that one statement right so then he discusses what yoga is and through the practices if you reach this stage what happens okay and then he discusses if you don't reach that stage what happens okay and then he moves on to describe the vrittis okay so vrittis are i told you fluctuations okay i will write this down also because <clears throat> okay so vrittis are nothing but fluctuations v r i t t i s right so i again i have discussed this very very deeply in the beginning sessions right so then he moves on to describe the fluctuations right so today we are going to cover as many fluctuations fluctuations as possible and then i will tell you about the division of the practices so ashtang yoga or eight limbs of yoga they are the practices for a beginner level student but there are other practices that are given by him which are for the intermediate and advanced level student also so raj yoga is including a lot of other things as well but ashtang yoga gained the most fame because um, most of the people they were beginners right i told you in order to even start raj yoga there is already a lot of training and cleansing that you have done right so uh, the practices of karma yoga and bhakti yoga to a great extent you have practiced right when you reach the point of raj yoga so uh, advanced level students were very less in number intermediate level students were little bit more but still less but beginners were a lot 
right so that is one of the main uh, parts of raj yuga that got highlighted right so let's talk about the fluctuations there are five fluctuations in total right and today i want you to so however many we are able to cover okay just observe which ones you are going through in your everyday life because fluctuations are nothing apart from what we are experiencing every day right uh and <clears throat> most people think fluctuations are something different right but they are a part of your life and when you start observing this thing you start becoming aware how many fluctuations you are going through all the time right so uh first one is called praman this is the right knowledge then second one is viparye this is your wrong knowledge then we have vikalp this is false knowledge nidra which is sleep and smriti which is memory i will spell all of them right so praman is p r a m a n a this is right knowledge viparye v i p a r y a y a which is wrong knowledge vikalp v i k a l p a which is false knowledge nidra n i d r a which is sleep and smriti s m r i t i or memory um okay so uh thomas i reread your question because i was typing so your question is that raj yoga is same as eight limbs so i have already uh, talked on this that it is more than the eight limbs and it's the same as ashtanga so by ashtanga you mean uh the physical practice that you are doing right uh, the ashtanga classes that you have <clears throat> yes but i what my question to you is that uh, when you are saying ashtanga uh, you are talking about the um, ashtanga classes that you have the practical ones you are trying to connect all of these like the raj yog then ashtanga yes the ashtanga pra- yes okay so uh, ashtanga is a very very deep practice and uh, uh, as per my knowledge when patavai joyce he gave this uh, practice uh, he gave it in so much detail and depth that his main goal was that through the physical movements like you guys are 
mostly moving in ashtanga series right different different series and different different levels of those series so when his uh, main or basic idea as far as i am aware uh, i will just share that much okay um, uh, he devised this practice so that through the movements only you could reach this stage where you are uh, you know experiencing the eight eight limbs of raj yogundi in fact like he um, devised the practice in such a way that through the uh, a uh, sequential movement uh, you would see that he has given drishti or sight where you have to see for all the asanas right so uh, in meditation also you will see a lot of practices they you know involve either focusing on the tip of the nose or focusing on the agro center right and you will see in no asan has he like uh, uh, his basically entire system was uh, devised in such a way that through these movements only one is able to um incorporate the uh, ashtanga theory and philosophy of patanjali right because he has given fixed points to see also the ways of breathing as well he has incorporated with each movement right so he was actually trying to uh, as far as i am aware incorporate uh, the eight limbs in these practices only right when you move the body basically he was trying to create a series of movements which will eventually when one practices them well they reach a stage where they are going into meditation only through those movements right so um, he he just knew that it was easier to practice the postures right and if he uh, like uh, merged both of them it will be easier for people to uh, go through the practices basically right like surya namaskar if you look at surya namaskar it is not merely a physical practice it's a, a combination it's in fact a very dynamic practice and uh, through the practice of surya namaskar only one can um, experience very deep levels of meditation as well right mm-hmm. so i think ashtanga series when he designed his goal was this only in order to uh, like um have both the ideas together right patanjali's idea of raj yoga along with his practices okay so let's come back to our fluctuations or rittis okay yeah so first fluctuation is praman or right knowledge so now a lot of students they have immediately come up with this question that how can right knowledge be a fluctuation right so you know when your philosophy class happens so most of the information or all of the information is actually in uh, alignment with the ultimate realities only right so we don't discuss other things right we are talking about the okay this is the reality you know this is the truth right we are trying to explore that yog philosophy is trying to explore that thing right so uh, <clears throat> when you talk of the uh, right knowledge so right knowledge also has the tendency to you know create fluctuations in your mind if you you know you have similar kinds of thoughts like yesterday we were talking uh, you know the intense desire to get liberated or i was discussing with you the thoughts only right when you get the thought that you have to come back to your object right means there is still the existence of the fluctuation is still there the vritti is still there if you are still getting this thought that you have to come back to your object just the quality has changed right so when you come in touch with the right knowledge also there are fluctuations that take place right because you're constantly processing that thing you're comprehending that thing and then you start seeing the things around you in that respect right so when the right knowledge is shared with you then again there is some fluctuation that takes place okay that is why it is said that right knowledge the yogi or the person who is trying to attain the final goal they are trying to rise above 
even this state right so right knowledge is good right overall whatever we are exposed to if we are at least having the right knowledge in our lives it is very very good but the yogi even transcends this right so when you practice yoga first you will come in touch with the right knowledge okay and then there will come a point because i told you the final point of yoga right where the fluctuations cease to exist right naturally so at that point of time even there is no space for right knowledge also right that also gets eradicated finally so the right knowledge creates some level of fluctuations within us right so patanjali said there are three ways in which you can get the right knowledge first way in which you can get the right knowledge is through your direct experience okay he said that if i am having a direct experience i can say that this is the truth like right now there is a phone in front of me right and i am taking your class so because i can see the phone i my senses are able to perceive so direct experience is generally through the senses only right so i am able to see the phone it is actually there right so this is becoming a source of correct information for me right that my eyes are they are fine right they are not uh, it's not like i cannot see right so when i can see something it is right in front of me it becomes a source for my validation that this information is correct okay yeah. then he said there are also other ways in which you can perceive that the knowledge is correct okay so uh one thing is my direct experience but sometimes the senses you know they deceive us right so sometimes you know when you really uh, like suppose let me take the example of somebody who is in a desert right so uh, there is no water there is a lot of sunlight and as a result a lot of people see water right where there is no water right it's called a mirage so now my senses are still working but they are not giving me the right information right so in this case i can move to my next source of correct information which is inference now when there are clouds in the sky right and they are black in color and i cannot even see the sun right so i can come to this inference that it is going to rain okay but inference requires a very strong reasoning it's not like i saw x y z thing and i directly inferred that this is the scenario right no because that is subjective in nature inference requires good logic okay there has to be some strong logic for me to infer that if there are such kind of clouds in the sky then it will rain right the entire science of you know the water evaporating and then the clouds being formed and then uh, it coming down again in the form of water so this is the strong logic behind it that okay i can predict now it will rain right so second form becomes your inference and then the third form uh, is the testimony so there are some situations especially when you walk on a uh, you are on a spiritual journey right i told you you are trying to observe the things you cannot see right so that is why the guru or teacher is very important on the spiritual path if you find the right guru for yourself you will go very very ahead right in your journey so there are some things which you have not experienced and which through certain practices that you are doing maybe you will experience but you need somebody to guide you right and those become the um uh part that come under the inference right now you need somebody else's understanding on that right so suppose you are walking on a spiritual journey so there are some checkpoints that will come in like if i go from here till the shop there are some you know some areas that i will have to pass so some checkpoints are always there so somebody who has walked at least ahead of me right so suppose the other person has also not re- reached the shop but at least they are ahead of me right 
so that person can at least guide me in that oh you know there is a pothole over there right so you make sure you cross this thing or after this uh, after walking straight for 100 meters you have to take a left or a right yeah so somebody who has walked more than me right and can guide me how i can at least reach till the point that they have reached right they act as a guru right so there this is when when you you are now incapable right of coming to any kind of conclusion right so you take the word of someone else and then you walk the path again you validate it you walk the path and then you see oh actually i had to take a right yeah or actually there was a pothole over there right and then you the target is to reach at least till the point of the person who is guiding you right so inference cannot be taken by just anybody okay so a lot of people they look for gurus and they don't find the right one right they find that they have been fooled so you have to be very careful when you are choosing your guru right because uh, it's it's a very uh, delicate kind of matter you become very vulnerable in this case right anywhere i will point you or anywhere the guru will point you you will go in that, that direction right you will not question it right so you have to be very careful in choosing the teacher right and the teacher should be such that the information is being passed down as it is there is no change or there is no mi- mixing of their ideology right with the teachings the main teachings if that is happening then you know they, they you can go in any direction then right so you need somebody who can at least pass down the information correctly right you have to be careful but this can become a source of correct information for you so this is the first vritti tomorrow we will discuss the uh, sorry day after tomorrow because it's saturday on monday we will talk more about uh, uh, the other fluctuations any doubts questions queries that i can address for you any questions all right okay so we'll just close the session with om shanti so om shanti guys uh, take care i will see you for pranayam class in the afternoon and uh, because it's already almost time for your next class so take four five five seven minutes for break and then join the next class right because ma'am will also join shortly so take care guys and bye uh, bye Bye thanks Bye bye